The concept of openness is usually a very wholesome and beautiful thing, with the possible exceptions being heart surgeries and most glory holes. But the key of E major is not one of those exceptions. So today, we're gonna talk about how you can kind of incorporate some really beautiful open chords in your playing. If you suck at bar chords, this is definitely the lesson for you, okay? So, the key of E major starts off with an E major chord, all right? So just second fret on the A string, second fret on the D string, first fret on the G string, okay? So uh, the two, arguably the two most important notes in the key of E major are E, right? It's, that's the root of the key, and then it's fifth, B, all right? Now, the cool thing about the way a guitar is set up in standard tuning, the top two strings are a B and an E, so the one and the five in the key of E. So any single chord that you have in the key of E, you can actually just let these top two strings, just let them fly, just leave those open. So one of the best examples of doing this is the dreaded F sharp minor chord, which would be the two chord in the key of E. One of the harder bar chords uh, to get down because tension is really strong near, uh, near the nut. So to hold down the second fret, fourth fret, fourth fret, second fret, second fret, second fret, is kind of difficult if you're maybe first starting out or, or whatever. But uh, what you can do is just take that same shape and then we're gonna open up those top two strings, okay? All right, and uh, aside from just doing that, we're actually gonna abandon the root note, okay? So this is gonna be our second shape. All of this exercise is gonna be two shapes that we can move around and just make really cool, uh, pretty sounding open chords, all right? So again, our F sharp minor is just gonna be your ring finger on the fourth fret of the A string, your pinky finger right behind it on the fourth fret of the D string, and your pointer finger on the second fret of the G string. So if you just play these three notes, that's a legit F sharp minor chord, where your root note is right here. But if you add the B in the E string, you kind of get this really kind of pretty, chimey, open sounding chord, okay? Now, we can just use this new shape as our minor chord shape in the key of E. So we already have, most people already know this first one, the E major shape. Now we're just adding one more shape, and we're gonna go through and add this to all the main chords in the key of E, okay? So if you've watched any of the chord building videos, you know the one chord is right here. The two chord is always a whole step higher, so this would be our F sharp minor chord, but now we've got this open chimey one. The next minor chord would be two frets higher, another whole step. So this will be our new three chord. The next one is gonna be A major, okay? So now this is gonna be the four chord in the key of E. We can take that exact same E shape, but then just move it down here. So uh, in my mind, I'm thinking of the root note being on the fifth fret of the low E string where you would put a traditional major bar chord, okay? But we're gonna leave that open and then just take the rest of what's under there, which is really just E major shape. So if you wanna slide into it quickly, like from an E to an A, you can kind of just visualize where your pointer finger would have been if we were doing things the old unpretty way and then just kind of slide. And really, what we're doing here, by adding these notes, some of the, a lot of these chords don't have a B and E note in them. For example, let's take this A major chord, okay? An A major chord consists of the notes A, C sharp, and E. So a regular A major chord already has an E in it. All we're doing, by leaving it open, is adding a B note, okay? So if you add a B to an A major chord, if you uh, count around uh, through the notes in A major, that B ends up being the second fret or the ninth fret, or the second note or the ninth note. So it would be an A add nine, technically. All of these chords will have different names if we want to get uh, technical with what we're actually adding when we add the open B and the open E string to it. But I don't think the names are so important as just how they sound, okay? They kind of give you that more of an open sound that you have going on. So there's our A major chord, there's our four chord. The five chord is gonna be a B major. So that already sounds really good with that open B because we're just reinforcing the B-ness of it. All right, and then the six chord is gonna be C sharp minor. We add that same minor shape that we did for the other two ones, okay? So again, we have three, let's do them out of order a little bit. We have three major chords, or major rooted chords that we're kind of extending. The open E, the A, again, kind of line it up right here 
on the fifth fret, and then down to for B. So E major, A, which is really A add nine, a B with an E in it now. So that's a one, four, five. But it sounds uh, a lot less basic than your your run of the mill one four fives, you know, like a like a C F G or a G C D something like that. And you can actually use a capo to kind of use this in other keys too, outside from just the key of E major. Now, let's do the same thing with the minor chords. Okay, remember we line the first root note up with the second fret on the low E string. So here's our F sharp, G sharp, and then. C sharp, okay? All right, so any combination of these chords is gonna sound really, really good. I uh, personally think if you kind of play some of these finger style, it really sounds great too, like. Especially if you kind of jump back and forth between uh, the E and the B, because again, that E is really, you can use it, or the B string, uh, as a, a pedal, kind of like a drone sound that you're just adding on top of all of these. So if you want to incorporate it into maybe like a finger style thing, where your thumb is maybe doing an alternating E string, D string type vibe, and then your fingers are just getting into... Sound really good, okay? So any finger style pattern that you want to use in there is gonna work because, again, the open strings are doing a lot of the heavy lifting and in this particular key, it works really well. You can experiment with other keys, maybe that you know have a B and an E with them, or like I said, use a capo, and they'll work to varying degrees. Uh, the key of A major is another one that I think sounds really good. Again, B being the two, Right in A, A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, uh, G sharp, and A. Right. Uh, so that actually also has that's another good example of it, which maybe we can do here. So if we take the chords in the key of A major, our one would be here. I'm still gonna root it on the low E string, but maybe I can go forward and backward. So what I mean by that is the sixth chord in the key of A is also in the key of E. It's that F sharp minor again. But some of the uh, different chords that you'll find will be the four on the five. So it'll kind of get just reorganized a little bit. So one, two, three, four. We have a D major and an E major, okay? So they both share that E major, but D major is now in the game. So we can kind of take the 10th fret, being a D, and then add that to the key of A. So we have the key, uh, an A major to a D. kind of start seeing how the different chords affect uh, different keys that you're in. So again, I think it's just something to always be aware of how the open strings can help you out. That's why it's really helpful to know which notes are in which keys, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So hopefully uh, you got some, some really beautiful advice right there that you can maybe incorporate in your own playing. If you have any questions or comments, hit me up in the comments, Instagram, Twitter, or the website, and I'll talk to you all soon. Thanks a lot.